Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Belgium once again and we're going to return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel a couple of times before. These guys are very highly regarded. This is going to be my third review from them and this one is actually the second of two beers that I bought from them quite recently and they're in the same series although they are supposed to be quite different and this one is supposed to be very interesting in fact so I have to say I'm very curious to see how it turns out fingers crossed it's another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head to Usfletren in uh, Vlaanderen in Flanders in Belgium it's actually very close to the French border in the southwestern part of the country and we're going to have a look at another beer from Destroza Brewers so this one is another member of their Black Damnation series it is number three the Black Damnations of course are barrel aged versions of their Black Albert Imperial Stout but uh, this one as I say is Black Damnation number three it's called Black Mess comes in at 13% ABV and this one is aged on Cal Isla Whiskey Bar from the Scottish island of Isla, which of course is known for its kind of peaty, smoky type whiskies. Somewhere that I do need to go and visit when I'm back home in the motherland at some point. But yeah, they describe this one on the back as being a Belgian royal stout from Flanders aged for two years in peated whiskey barrels. Now, I have to say, I'm really curious to see how this uh, comes into effect because the last one they had from the Black Damnation series, I thought it was nice, but I was really surprised at how light the mouthfeel in, uh, in that beer was. But uh, yeah, I noticed that in the Netherlands and in Belgium, using Scotch whiskey barrels for barrel aging is really quite popular in fact. But in my experience, you do have to be very, very careful with it because the Scotch barrels are really, really powerful in terms of the flavours that they kind of infuse into the beers. So two years, aging this for two years, I think is going to be pretty interesting. But I'm a little bit of a peat head, a rauch head, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So I love big smoky things. Uh, so yeah, I'm really curious to see how this one uh, how this one goes about its business. So let's crack on then. This one though, be aware if you are going to buy this kind of straight off the bat, I would suspect that for uh, for this and for any Scotch whiskey barrel aged beer, I think you do have to be a bit of a fan of kind of uh, graininess and peat and things like that to enjoy them to their uh, to their maximum. But uh, yeah, let's crack on with this one then. Black Damnation number three. The, uh, the Black Mess 13% aged on Cal Isla whiskey barrels from Isla for two years. This should be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from the Strills of Brawlers before, and we will no doubt add some more that list at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the belgian beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity but not as often as i would like and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Destroza Brewers then on to my brewery notes so as I've mentioned to you already Destroza Brewers are based in Usvletren in Vlaanderen in Belgium and the company was founded back in 2001 so the four men behind the company in the beginning were Carlo Hruthert uh, Peter Brehm, Philippe Diasens and also Urban Coteau and I do apologise if any of these pronunciations are bad because I do get mixed up a little bit sometimes between the Dutch pronunciation and the French pronunciation not that I am overly familiar with any of, any of those two languages of course but anyway, uh, Urban and Philippe uh, apparently owned an ostrich farm and they also had accommodation there as well but they wanted to develop beers that were distinctive to the region and so they started to collaborate with Carlo who was a local winemaker but eventually in 2003 the brewery was officially founded and they started brewing their beers at the Callier Brewery in Northern Hainaut and they continued there until 2006 and then they moved to Decca in Wostenvletern and then in 2014, they started brewing the beers at their own brewery, which is known as Het Ode Schulte, which is the little old school. But uh, this is in Oostvletren, of course, and they're still brewing there. But over the years, the brewery have become very decorated. They're known for their stronger and barrel-aged beers, and they've got a tasting room on site as well. And so far, they've produced over 150 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. But the name of the brewery 
comes from the historic Flemish word for ostrich, Streuze, and this is why they've got ostriches on all, uh, ostriches on all of their labels, can't speak, uh, but apparently it's also a slang term for tough as well, so I guess you could call this brewery the Tough Ostrich Brewery, which is kind of interesting. But like I say, very highly regarded brewery, these guys, and uh, I do hope I can go and visit them and film a wee out and about video there at some point in the future. That would be awesome to do. But uh, yeah, that's all I can tell you about the Strelza Brewers for the moment. If you want to learn more about them, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for the history section. Uh, one thing I should also point out about these uh, Black Damnation series beers is that there, when I checked the website for the last one, I'm sure there was somewhere in the region of 12 different kinds of Black Damnation and they were numbered. But within those different kinds, you also have different vintages. So they reproduce each of these different kinds of beer. Uh, year on year or at least a few of them they do at least so uh, yeah just be aware of that you will get the black damnation number one two three and so on but then you also get the vintage and this one I believe is the um, these ones that I've had are the 2020 vintage I think but we'll just check on the bottle there but uh, yeah does it say oh no this one says it's vintage 2018 mm, this is interesting it says on the side I'm not sure how well you can see that there but it does say right here that this is vintage 2018. The other one I'm sure was actually vintage 2020 so it's interesting they're kind of mixing these up a little bit. Either that or I've just got lucky. I'm not 100% sure. But as I said to you this is a 13% Imperial Stout aged in Cal Isla uh, whiskey barrels from the Scottish island of Isla um, for two years which is pretty damn impressive. But uh, the Black Damnation beers are barrel aged versions of their um, Black Alberts that they do. So uh, yeah, should be quite interesting. It says here that this one contains barley malt and wheat. So yeah, I think we can get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. You can also see the nice heraldic um, ostrich crest from Strolza Brewers on there as well. And you'll find something like that on each one of their beers. But uh, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So, I can't remember exactly when this beer was released because this one has been sitting in my fridge and my cellar, well, my cellar and then my fridge for a little while actually. But uh, yeah, I think I mentioned that in the last one when exactly it was released. I think I got these maybe at the end of May, sometime in May this year. So, it's not going to do them any harm to sit for a little bit considering what style of beer it is. It's the IPAs that you've got to drink pretty quickly, of course. But uh, yeah, let's have a little go at this one and see how we do. But uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see, and as you would expect from a 13% Imperial Stout, this one has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood color. But before the head disappears, uh, it poured with about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say um, medium tan head. It's faded away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer, but you can see um, the ring around the edge of the glass is kind of maintained in there. But there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards uh, the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look very, very nice. But there's a lovely, big, dark uh, ebony colour to this one. And as I've told you in previous reviews, when it comes to the colour of your beer, it's determined by one, the type of malts that you use. This determines the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Three, any barrel ageing that you do will affect it, but when it comes to imperial stouts, that's quite difficult to detect. It's quite difficult to see any influence of it. And then three, any fruity adjuncts or whatever that you put into the beer will affect it too. But those two last two variables tend to apply more to sour beers rather than anything else. But in terms of an imperial stout, this one um, is kind of exactly as you'd expect. And if we shine the light through it, it does have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola, Pepsi coloured edge to it, but you can see that it's quite hazy and I'm guessing that'll be from the wheat malt in this one. When you have wheat malt in these beers, they do tend to be pretty damn hazy. But uh, yeah, very impressive this one. Lovely, big, dark ebony rosewood colour this. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. I'm very, very curious about this beer, as I've said a few times. Now that's interesting. That's not quite what I expected. I'm going to say straight away that this beer comes across as being very, very smooth and very, very sweet. Now, I have to say, Cal Isla is a whisky that I don't think I've had before. I don't think I've ever had anything from these guys. But, you know, when it comes to these um, barrel-aged beers, you know, you can make a, um, 
you can make a little assumption about it. It says it's peated whiskey barrels, but in honesty, if I was smelling this blind and I was told, right, this is a Scotch whiskey barrel aged one, I probably wouldn't have guessed it was Isla because it's the woody character that you get forming the backbone of this beer is lovely and smooth, actually. It's got a lovely smoothness to it. And as I say, normally with Scotch whiskey barrels, you get a bit more of a kind of charry note to them. You get a bit of a graininess here. But the woody backbone in this one, I actually find to be very, very smooth. So... Yeah, maybe there is a factor with um, Scotch whisky barrel aging that you've got to do it over a certain amount of time to let the whole kind of beer mature in a sense. So do let me know about your experiences with that in the um, in the comment section. Well, it's always great to hear from you guys, like I say, and some of you really impart kind of ridiculous little pieces of knowledge into the channel, which is what I love. So do let me know about your experiences with Scotch whisky barrel aged beers in the, uh, the comment section below. But as I say, the backbone from this one is lovely and smooth. You can feel that big smooth oaky note to it. I do actually get a wee bit of vanilla out of it as well, which is kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, I like that. But you don't get too much of a peaty note out of this, I would say. But remember, the thing that you have when you actually taste these beers as well, whenever you barrel age them, the mouthfeel always drops away. And with the last um, one that we had in this series, I found it to be an incredibly light, uh, light bodied stout actually, but it was packed full of flavour so it was really interesting and quite different from other stouts that I've had in recent times. But like I say, the woody backbone of this one is quite impressive and very smooth. I mean, on top of that you can certainly smell a little bit of a kind of sort of brown bready quality in there and of course that's going to be the wheat that's giving you that. There's a bit of bread crust in there and you can smell some smoky characters infused into this as well. But um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this beer I think is really quite interesting and in, in, on many levels. So, um, yeah, fruity side, uh, the the kind of malty side of this one, I should say, I find to be very very interesting. So, yeah, I don't really know what else we can kind of say about this one. Uh, from that perspective, to be honest with you, the malty uh, barrel aged side of this thing is very, very smooth and it's almost slightly sweet with that wee vanilla note, which I didn't expect. But like I say, a kind of bready character, a brown bready character sitting on top of that, some nice bread crusty elements in there. You certainly get a bit of chocolate out of this beer, that's for sure. So you get that kind of dry, you know, 70 80% cocoa chocolate um, coming out of this one. But um, again, that doesn't smell overly bitter, to be honest with you. The chocolate actually smells quite smooth in this, but there's a good little bit of kind of uh, brown sugary element to this one. So I like, um, there's a good wee bit of a kind of brown sugary one to this. So there's a sweet kind of caramelly element in there. You get a wee bit more of a, um, you get a wee bit more of a kind of roasty toasty brown sugary element to it as well, uh, which I do like. You can smell a wee bit of that. But uh, yeah, it's quite a straight shooting stout, I think, on top of a, a nice smooth barrel. I don't know if there's too much else to say about that. I think we've covered everything that we really need to say about the malty uh, and barrel aged side of the beer. So hoppy side of things then, and remember this is a barrel aged beer for two years, so a lot of the hoppy character will have dropped out of this one. But you get a nice, <clears throat> you certainly get a nice little bit of a kind of slightly bitter earthy note in the back of the nose but you can feel there's quite a bit of smoothness to this one as well and then there's the remnants of a sort of grassy floral kind of thing to this too but as I say they're very very smooth and a lot of that has kind of dropped out of the the beer because it's barrel aged but the fruity side of this one is quite interesting I find that the fruity side of this beer has a wee bit of sharpness to it so you can certainly smell a wee bit of raisin uh, to this one uh, on the front of the nose but you also get some nice juicy kind of uh, plummy notes underneath you can certainly pick up that there's a wee element of a kind of cakey uh, vibe to this beer so say but then black currant for me and then a bit of a blackberry sitting on top of it you get a wee bit of a sharpness in there but i mean overall i think the um i do think the the quad the i do think the um the sort of aroma out of this beer is really quite interesting so I think they've pulled off something really interesting with this I'm really quite perplexed as to how this beer is going to go about its business because it's got sharper fruits the woody note is quite smooth and I would have expected this to be a big smoky you know a big smoky bastard of a beer but it doesn't seem like it's going to be that but who knows it can transpire differently in the flavour smooth hoppy elements and a nice kind of smooth malt base as well seems like it's one of these ones where everything just kind of fits together but uh, yeah let's have a go at it then and see how we get on so yeah this one is the black damnation number three black mess from the strozer brewers and us 13 percent uh, belgian royal stout and an imperial stout it's kind of similar to the russian imperial stout and we said that in the last video but uh, yeah aged on cal isla 
whiskey barrels for uh, two years. So this should be interesting. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Ooh. Just waiting to see how it develops. But first thing you're going to notice about this is just how silky and smooth it is. It feels a wee bit thicker than the other one did. But it's still, as I say, not the thickest of Imperial Stouts you're going to come across. But I'm going to say it does give you a wee bit of that kind of roasty, toasty, peaty kind of thing. Especially at the back of the palate. It takes a wee bit of time to come out. And I'm just surprised that that didn't show up in the, um, in the aroma a little bit more. But uh, yeah, the way this beer goes about its business, I think is pretty damn nice. So thumbs up to uh, Destroyza for this one. I like this. I do like this. Um, yeah, I will say it's quite, it's very similar in vibe to what we had from the, uh, the coffee club, the number four. But um, yeah, I think this one does, it goes about its business very nicely in a very similar way. It's, it's got a very similar vibe, but obviously just a slightly different flavour co uh, combination to it. So let's try and break this down a little bit and see how we go. So straight away across the middle, straight away across the middle third of your palate, uh, straight away across the middle third of your palate, you can feel that nice, smooth, oaky, woody sort of thing coming out of the beer. And that spreads back into the uh, the back third of your palate too, although it's a wee bit more kind of grainy and toasty and charred on the, uh, the back third of your palate. I would add that. So yeah, the... Yeah, the, the kind of malty, woody backbone of this beer is really nice and it just gives the whole thing a quite an almost silky smoothness there. So yeah, let's focus on the middle third of the palate just now so you can feel that nice, smooth, <clears throat> oaky, woody note there. That's the backbone of the beer. Uh, on top of that, um, you can feel there is a little bit of a layer of that kind of grainy, brown, sugary sort of thing that you're going to get from the Scotch whiskey. And then on top of that, you can feel a little bit of the kind of wheat malt coming into play. And... Within that, you do get a little bit of peatiness and you've kind of got a bit of a spectrum within that layer on the middle third of your palate. So towards the back, it's got a bit more of an intense peatiness and you can feel that just kind of fading away a wee bit as you move forward towards the front half of the um, the, the front half of that middle third of your palate. So yeah, there is a wee bit of a spectrum of peatiness in the middle third of your palate with this. But sitting on top of that, of course, you get the chocolatey elements to the beer. So yeah, the chocolate elements to this beer, I would say, uh, the chocolate elements to the beer, I would say, are um, just sitting on top of that. And it's quite a dry chocolate. And again, you get the same thing with that. Towards the back of that middle third of your palate, it's a little bit more bitter. You know, it's almost like an 80, 90% cocoa chocolate. But as you move further forward, it certainly gives you a wee bit more of a kind of, it certainly sweetens up a little bit and becomes more of maybe a 50, 60% cocoa chocolate. Still dark, bitter chocolate, right enough but you still get that in it. But in the middle of that chocolate layer, you can feel there's a, a circle right in the dead centre of your palate, and that's where the kind of brown sugary notes come out of the beer. So in the dead centre of that, you can feel there's a wee bit of a kind of treacly molasses sort of thing, but I think it's like a... I do actually find it's got a wee bit of a sweet caramel to it, and these are the boozy notes of the beer. At 13%, of course, you are going to get a fair bit of booziness out of this beer, but as you move out towards the edge of your palate from that, it's got a little bit more of a kind of McVitie's digestive grainy biscuity sort of thing which I can certainly appreciate so uh, yeah some interesting things going on in this beer that's for sure but um, yeah the fruity components in this beer as well are, are really suit all the, the kind of smoothness and sweetness you've got in the um, the middle of the palate with this beer too but you do get a wee bit of, of um, you do get a wee bit of um, uh, you do get a wee bit of kind of vanilla uh, to this beer. I think there is a wee touch of vanilla just underneath the kind of front half of that, um, the front half of that uh, middle third of your tongue. You do get a wee bit of that the further you go into the aftertaste. But like I say, this beer 
the tendency with this one is to be more roasty and toasty the further you go into the aftertaste and that's coming out quite a lot with this one so yeah i like how it um how it goes about its business in that regard but yeah back third uh, on the back third of your palette then you're getting as i say we've, we've covered i think the middle third of the palette as much as we need to as i say this is quite a straight shooting beer but i like it um so the pt notes we'll talk about that because the pt notes kind of push into the the middle third of your palette as well but uh yeah um but yeah underside of the as we say underside of the the back third of your palette there you've got a nice kind of smooth um as we say a nice kind of smooth um You get, yeah, you do, as I say, you can get that nice smooth woody note there, but in the, as you move towards the very back of your palate, it certainly gets a bit more roasty and toasty. Then on top of that, the kind of bready layer that's in there, there's a lot more peaty character to this one. And the peat is, a, it's kind of a mix, it's quite a strong peat. And remember, Scottish peated malts, if you compare them to the German Rauch malts, for example, those are, you know, more, uh, the, Ge the German Rauch malts are more kind of meaty and things. The Scotch peat whiskey. It's a lot more kind of grassy and earthy and you certainly get a bit of that in the beer and it sort of creeps forward again it's of this sort of spectrum that you get and um, so at the very back of the beer it comes across as really quite strong and potent and it just fades a little bit as you move further forward so uh yeah on top of this one uh, on top of all of that you do get a sort of um you do get some uh you do get some kind of um but you know lighter airy yeasty esters out of this one which is kind of interesting so the flavor at the back third of your palate is a little bit taller than in the middle third of your palate which is, is quite interesting i'll say that so um yeah i like i do like how this um how this goes together in that sense but yeah back third of your palate to say the flavor on top of that roasty that that kind of woody note you get the kind of grainy bready element with all the kind of peaty notes in it and on top of that you've got the kind of lighter airy yeasty kind of things and it's quite a sort of almost, almost almost a slightly sweet brown bready note that you get in there but you can get little bits of kind of the chocolatey powdery dryness and stuff like that but as you start from the back of your palate with this beer you can feel the flavor just condenses down a wee bit then as you go into the middle third of your palate it's quite you know it is quite kind of pushed down in that sense and condensed together and i like that about this beer i do like how this beer uh, how the flavors just sort of combine in this one i think it it works really really well but uh yeah interesting stuff i think we can see that about this one for sure so the malty barrel aged backbone of this one i think works very very well but yeah on the um as we say on the uh the hoppy side of things then that's what we need to cover next So yeah, the hoppy side of things for me, back corners of the palate, you've certainly got a nice wee bit of earthiness in there. And as you move further forward, you can feel um, it gets a little bit more herbal. And as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, there's a little remnant of a kind of floral aromaticity. As we said earlier, the kind of hoppy components of this beer will have dropped out of it quite considerably when you consider the fact that it's aged for two years. But round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy you do get a wee touch of zestiness in it and then behind the front curve of your palate the front third of your tongue that's where you get the more oily fruity sort of things there but yeah let's focus on that front third of your palate then so border region between front third and middle third of your palate it's sort of as we say it kind of uh, as we say it's sort of you can feel a little bit of a bready build up in there and a wee bit of a bread crusty sort of thing and the base of that front third of your palate as i say is a little bit more kind of um it's a little bit more it's got a bit of the woodiness underneath and a bit of the smoothness of the wood but it's got a bit more of a roasty toasty crusty element to it but on top of that as we say a nice kind of juicy fruity ester in there uh, and on the back you do almost get a little bit of a cakey you note, know, like a charred kind of chocolate brownie sort of thing on the back of that um front third of your palate but sitting on top of that you have more of a you certainly have mo a little bit of a kind of raisiny note in there then you start to get a bit of a kind of juicy plummy pruney sort of thing on the back as well and then as you move further forward as you move further forward um on into the front half of that front third of your tongue pardon me there's a wee bit more of a kind of black currenty 
you get a wee bit more of a kind of black currenty, blackberry sort of thing out of this beer, which I, I do like very much. So uh, yeah, it goes together really nicely, this beer. I think the way that it goes about its business works. Um, it's kind of, it, it's quite typical as to what you would expect. I find this one to be quite straight shooting in a way. But um, it's one of these ones that you can just say it's been really nicely crafted. And I'm interested about the the, the barrel aging in this because as I always say, Scotch <clears throat> Scotch whiskey barrel aging can be very, very powerful. But they've managed to mellow, it, that mellow out this beer very, very nicely in fact. So that's worth um, bearing in mind with this one. So thumbs up to Destroys the Brawlers for this. This is pretty damn solid. But let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then. So, um, as I said, these these beers, um, this is actually quite light in mouthfeel. It's kind of towards the top end, the mid-body, maybe even straight in the middle of the spectrum. Smooth carbonation. It's got a wee bit of an oiliness to it. I do like how this one goes together. In terms of its IBUs, it's got about a 60, 70 IBU kind of count to it. Um, as I was saying, I just noticed on the bottle there, it says, like, it says say 70 IBUs, so I actually got it right this time. Amazing. Um, but yeah, um, as I would say, it's not the most bitter of um, Imperial Stouts that you're going to come across. It's not going to blow the head off you in that sense, but some of the bitterness is coming from the, the roasty, sort of charred elements of the barrel aging and the hops I think are playing a role in this as well but it's, as I say not going to blow the head off you the malty base is quite smooth in that sense there's a wee bit of sweetness and there's um, you know you've got a good sort of there's a good balance between the barrel aging the smoothness the toastiness and the kind of sweetness in this beer as well but on top of that you've got some nice um, you do have some sort of juicy uh, fruity elements in there as well. There's a little bit of a sharper fruitiness, a bit of a juiciness, as I say, some nice kind of smooth hoppy characters as well. But uh, yeah, I really like how this beer goes about its business. It gets a big thumbs up from me. The other one was good, <clears throat> but you know, being Scottish, I'm obviously a little bit biased to uh, to this one, and I really like how this one goes together. So uh, yeah, I think this is uh, this is pretty damn nice. So thumbs up to the Strozo Brewers for this. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. So yeah, this one was the Black Damnation number no. three, Black Mess, a thirteen percent uh, Belgian Royal Stout, as they call it. But essentially, it's not that far away from a Russian Imperial Stout. I would say maybe a bit more bready, to be honest. But uh, yeah, of course, these beers are barrel aged versions of the Black Albert. I need to try the original Black Albert from uh, the Strozo at some point. So I need to talk to my Dutch friends about getting hold of uh, that because they can get it quite easily. But uh, yeah, really, uh, really, really nice beer, this one. I think it goes together um, very, very well, actually. So uh, yeah, 13% Cal Isla Whiskey Barrel Aged Belgian Royal Stout. Not too often you can say that, but really nicely done beer, this one. But that's kind of what we would expect of Destroyza. These guys know what they're doing. And I need to try a few different styles from them. I think it's been all stouts that we've had from uh, from these guys so far. So we maybe need to try a few like quadruples and uh, barley wines and stuff like this from them. I know they do a couple of IPAs too, so it'd be interesting to check them out. But yeah, we can leave it there for just now. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from Destroys of Brewers as well. And I hope that you guys uh, have enjoyed this one. Slange it, skull, cheers, and see you guys in the next review. Make sure you check out the Stroza, check out my social media, and check out theirs. Slange it just now.